Here in Russia on Friday morning, a meteor entered the Earth's atmosphere and created a massive sonic boom that broke windows and damaged buildings over hundreds of miles of Western Siberia and Kazakhstan. According to the numbers we know so far, about 500 people were injured, most of them by broken glass. The Russian Academy of Sciences put out a statement Friday afternoon saying that they, as far as they understood, this was a 10-ton object, maybe made of iron, that almost entirely evaporated entering the Earth's atmosphere, but that there may have been fragments that continued to fly after that explosion and reached the Earth. There was a huge amount of crowdsourcing that began right away this morning. People who had filmed projectiles moving across the air from their cars or using their phones and immediately uploaded it onto the internet. Emergency services have sent out, they say, more than 20,000 people to comb the area looking for more casualties or looking for traces of the meteorite itself. There were seven airplanes that were put in the air right away to try and locate possible impact. I'm Marcus Mabry for the New York Times. For more on the science behind asteroids and other near-Earth object threats, I'm joined by Richard Benzel, a professor of planetary sciences at MIT. Professor, thanks for being here. Good morning. It's a pleasure. Was this meteorite coming from the same direction as a large asteroid that is supposed to pass near Earth later today? Do, do we know? It actually turns out all the early reports that this object that struck over Russia was traveling in a complete opposite direction than the uh, object called DA-14 that's going to pass by today. So um, we don't think they're related. The first, uh, first indications are that these are totally unrelated. And size-wise, was this a relative space pebble, or how would you compare what, actually, what we think destructed over S Siberia with, with actually the large asteroid that is going to have a near miss today? The Siberia object was probably about the size of an SUV, whereas uh, DA-14 asteroid passing later today is about half the size of a football field. So just compare the half the size of a football field to the SUV that's given to the MVP. What, what other threats are out there? This is, um, again, we have reports from Russia of, of, of some injuries, but you know, not, not terribly extensive. Uh, what other near-Earth object threats are out there? Well, we think something about the size that just struck over Russia uh, probably hits the Earth's atmosphere once every 10 or 20 years. Uh, most likely, of course, it's over a totally uninhabited area over the oceans. Uh, so the chances of this kind of thing happening over a populated area are you know, many, many decades apart. But it's one of uh, thousands, if not millions, of objects uh, that uh, uh, orbit through space. And uh, from time to time, these objects do strike the Earth. Why do, they, why do so many of them seem to hit Siberia? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 1908 Tunguska was the last major impact. And, uh, and that flattened the entire know. forest of like almost 1,000 a a thousand square miles, was it? Yeah, the area was equivalent to the area inside the Washington Beltway that was flattened uh, by Tunguska 1908. Uh, so this one was smaller, but uh, it's, it's the uh, pressure wave that this thing makes in the atmosphere that does all the damage. The body itself probably broke apart into tiny bits, but it made such a big pressure wave, uh, that's what's uh, causing the damage and the injuries. What, what kind of the threat do we really have here? I mean, you know, we've seen all the movies. Uh, do we really have to worry about an extinction event, as we discussed when it comes to the dinosaurs in historical terms, that could actually uh, be an object that would actually wipe out life on the planet? Is that actually a concern, or is that science fiction? No, that's something we paid a lot of attention to. In fact, NASA surveys, international surveys, have identified over 95% of all the largest objects that have any potential at uh, a, sort of a global uh, catastrophe. Uh, for events like this, uh, which are just localized, events, sort of like you might, a damage you might get from a tornado. Um, these happen maybe every few decades to century, and um, we're, we're relatively incomplete in terms of sampling sizes as small as uh, an SUV. Final question, Professor. Uh, what do we do, need to do to prepare for the larger objects, and can you prepare? 
The best thing to do is to find them early. The surveys that can find these objects in space long before they encounter the Earth. For example, DA-14 we found a year ago, and we've had a whole year to plan for a suite of observations, science observations that we're going to make as it passes by. Excellent. Thanks so much for being here, Professor. My pleasure. That's all for now. I'm Marcus Mabry for the New York Times.